This video is brought to you by NordVPN. It's this great service that'll protect you while you're on the web, and what a time to get it. Right now, they have this special offer, 75% off a three-year plan. Plus, if you use the code COMPANYMAN, you'll get an extra month for free. All you have to do is go to nordvpn.com slash companyman. The link is in the description. Red Lobster has fallen on some tough times, and I wanna talk about that, but there's a lot of things I wanna talk about. Like, their Cheddar Bay Biscuits. My gosh, I'm gonna talk about Red Lobster and not mention these? They're delicious. Somehow, I don't even think of lobster when I hear Red Lobster. I think of these things, and I know they're popular. They've said that they serve over one million of these a day. I was surprised to learn that they weren't even introduced until 1988, 20 years after the company's inception. Oh, I have a lot of surprising facts to share today, but Let's start at the beginning. There's one man who's more associated with Red Lobster than anyone else, someone you've probably never heard of, which is a shame, so let me tell you about him. His name is Bill Darden. In 1938, he opened a small diner in his hometown in Georgia. Right away, I can identify three reasons that this diner was likely to fail. First off, it was in 1938, toward the end of the Great Depression, not really the best time to start almost any business. Second, he was only 19 years old at the time, and third, he refused used to segregate his customers based on race, which was almost unheard of in 1930s Georgia. Quite honestly, I have no way of knowing how successful this place was, but I can tell you that he had enough money and ambition to expand his involvement in the restaurant business. He went on to franchise some Howard Johnson locations, and in 1963, he purchased a seafood restaurant in Orlando called Gary's Duck Inn. The success of that place, combined with his success in selling seafood in his other businesses, motivated him to start his own seafood restaurant called, you know what, I left out my favorite part. All right, you're going to love this. That seafood restaurant that he opened was obviously called Red Lobster, but that diner in 1938, it was called Green Frog. I don't even see how that makes sense. They had the slogan, service with a hop, and I suppose they had this whole theme going, but come on. Bill Darden, on multiple occasions, named his restaurant after an animal preceded by the color of that animal. First was Green Frog, and then came Red Lobster. As soon as I learned that, I couldn't wait to tell everyone. There's actually no confirmation that one name came from the other, but what else am I supposed to think? And you know what else? I think Bill Darden liked likes a challenge. Obviously the odds were against him with the Green Frog and he was going out on a limb again with Red Lobster. He envisioned it as something that didn't really exist at the time, a seafood restaurant targeting families, which meant the menu items had to be reasonably priced and it had to be located outside of major cities. The main reason I say he likes challenges is because he opened this first Red Lobster in Lakeland, Florida. It's well outside of two major cities and just about the furthest you could possibly get from the coast and still be in Florida, which you would expect to be just about the worst spot to open a seafood restaurant. And it seems that's exactly why he wanted it there, testing it out to prove that it could be successful even in the most unlikely locations. He opened that first one in 1968, and by 1970, things were going pretty well. He had already opened two more in that area and had two more on the way, but where do you go from there? They were making money. They had $2.4 million dollars in sales that year, but of course, that's not enough to start opening Red Lobsters across the country. A lot of businesses like this start franchising locations, but not Bill Darden. He went a different direction when he sold it to a company that you may not expect, General Mills. Sounds like a weird connection at first. The company that makes Cheerios is the company that made Red Lobster so big. It's actually not as strange as it sounds. General Mills was just a huge, diverse company that was actually pretty involved in fish sales. So the acquisition made sense. They had some connections in the industry and I'm guessing they saw potential in Darden's new concept of a family seafood restaurant. It was good for Darden too because he saw it as a way for his creation to grow. Plus, General Mills kept him heavily involved in the business by offering him various executive positions over the years. So Red Lobster was now in the hands of a large company that had the necessary resources to start expanding it. Didn't waste any time either. As I said, when they bought it in 1970, there were three three locations with two more on the way. By the end of their first year of owning it, they expanded into 24 locations that were generating 9.1 million in sales. Just five years later, they were up to 174 locations with sales of 174 million. After five more years, they had 
291 locations that were generating 528 million. Now, of course, you're going to grow and increase sales by opening so many new locations, but what I want to point out is how, on average, each location was generating more business as the years went on, evidenced by the fact that their sales per location was increasing at an incredible rate. I think that's a meaningful number here. At first, with their initial rapid push into the market, they weren't selling as much at each one, but as the brand started taking off, it didn't take long to increase that number well beyond where it started. The other thing I wanted to mention here is the geographic expansion. Before General Mills, all those three restaurants were in Central Florida. By the 1980s, they were reaching more than half the country. General Mills continued expanding their involvement in the restaurant industry through the rest of the 1980s. Not just opening more Red Lobsters, but renovating the old ones, and aside from Red Lobster, they started investing in other restaurant chains, most notably the Olive Garden. You may be surprised to learn that the Olive Garden was started in the mid-80s by General Mills as a way to complement Red Lobster and expand their presence in the industry. And just as they had done with Red Lobster over a decade before, the Olive Garden grew to hundreds of locations within a few years. By 1995, General Mills decided that they wanted to start concentrating more on their Cheerios and that side of their business rather than these restaurants. That shift in focus motivated them to spin off all of their restaurants, which was mainly Red Lobster and the Olive Garden, into their own publicly traded company, which meant after 25 years, General Mills was done with them, and Red Lobster was now functioning as its own company, alongside the Olive Garden. At the time of the spin-off, there were 715 Red Lobsters and 477 Olive Gardens operating in every state except Alaska, combining for over 3 billion in sales. Over those years, Darden restaurants had become less and less reliant on Red Lobster. Ever since that 1995 spin-off, Red Lobster had become pretty stagnant. 25 years of non-stop growth had finally stopped. There were actually more Red Lobsters existing in 1995 than there were in 2013. Now, Olive Garden continued growing. Olive Garden locations surpassed Red Lobster locations for the first time ever in 2009. And plus, aside from that, Darden was now operating various other restaurant chains too, most notably Longhorn Steakhouse. And Red Lobster just wasn't doing too well either. It became the worst performing restaurant that Darden owned. Same restaurant sales were dipping across the entire industry, even at the Olive Garden, but Red Lobsters were dipping at an incredible rate. A possible explanation for this is increased competition. Other similar restaurants were gaining momentum, and Red Lobster was failing to keep up. In an attempt to recover, they tried expanding their menu into more non-seafood items, which may not have been the best idea, since they're so associated with seafood and that's just pulling away from their strength. They also tried raising prices in hopes that it would raise their total sales, but again, the affordability part is kind of the appeal. So, not surprisingly, that just reduced their number of customers, and it didn't help things. So in 2013, Darden Restaurants, named after Bill Darden, founder of Red Lobster, announced they wanted to separate themselves from Red Lobster. They essentially gave up on them. A few months later, in May of 2014, it was sold to Golden Gate Capital, a private equity firm, for $2.1 billion. The deal was helpful for Darden, mostly because they needed money, and they needed to focus on on other things. They used most of it to pay off some debt, and it gave them some freedom to work on their other chains. The Olive Garden was struggling and needed attention. There were some other smaller chains under their control that were doing fine, but they needed some nurturing, and this allowed them to do it. Red Lobster has been a private company ever since, so I can't conclusively tell you how they've been doing, but here's some positive indicators. Well, for one, they're still around. If they had continued falling at the rate that they were, I'm not so sure that that would be the case right now. In 2015, the new CEO said, We believe we're benefiting greatly from being an independent company. We've had positive comparable restaurant sales growth each quarter since separation. They have made the menu more seafood oriented since then, which seems like a good move to me. They've also funded some remodeling and renovations to existing restaurants and actually opened more locations. I guess in 2016, it was chosen in a survey of 18 to 24 year olds as their top restaurant choice. That's the same article also states that they increased the size of their shrimp, changed cooking practices to improve taste, offered a new line of alcoholic drinks to encourage customers to dine in the restaurant, and apparently sales soared when Beyond
Beyonce mentioned them in one of her songs. I don't know, it just seems like they're more popular today than they were a few years ago. That's the journey of Red Lobster, and it was eventful. Can I just take a minute to review some of the crazy facts about this company that should stick with you forever? You knew I had to get back to it. Red Lobster was started by a guy who had previously named a restaurant Green Frog. I kind of wish he would have continued opening new restaurants just to see if that trend would have continued. Maybe Grey Elephant or Orange Tiger or <laughs> this is getting s Pink Pig. I like that one. And what about the other surprising facts? Red Lobster was owned by General Mills for 25 years. And related to that one, the Olive Garden also came from General Mills. And what about this? Darden Restaurants, named after the founder of Red Lobster, no longer owns Red Lobster. Those are some pretty crazy facts that you probably didn't know before today. Let me add one more to the list to make it an even five. Now, this one isn't as surprising, but it's still interesting. Red Lobster invented popcorn shrimp. Let me know in the comments, did you know any of that? Look, I know, I probably found the whole green frog thing more entertaining than you did, but I just loved it, so I wasn't going to pass it up. Also, what's your perception of Red Lobster as a customer? Was there a point where you noticed that they were declining a bit, so you stopped going there and maybe started favoring their competition? And if so, have you been there since and noticed any kind of improvement? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Now, let me tell you more about today's sponsor, NordVPN, because they're offering an important service, web protection. I'm talking about real protection against the hackers of the world trying to break into your accounts and actually learn your location, which I know it can be scary to think about. I don't like thinking about it, and that's why I use NordVPN. It's very easy. You can quickly connect to thousands of super fast servers in over 61 countries. There's no data logging and 24-7 customer support. Honestly, I've been using it for well over a year now, and two words I would use to describe it are easy and effective. I recommend you give it a try, and it's a great time to do it, because if you go to nordvpn.com slash companyman, you'll get 75% off a three-year plan, which comes to $2.99 a month, and use that code companyman to get an extra month for free. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching.